Welcome. In this video, we are going to continue our exploration of continuity. This time, we're going to do it by exploring the ceiling and the floor functions. The ceiling function, y equals, and these brackets with only a ceiling on them are, um, are read the ceiling of x, is defined as the smallest integer greater than or equal to x, while the floor function, and you'll notice the brackets this time, are covered on the floor but not on top, y equals the floor of x is defined as the largest integer less than or equal to x. So to help explain these definitions, let's begin with a picture. So here is just your usual x and y axis. And I'm going to draw a house, which I will later erase. So on your paper, there's no need to draw the house, but I'm going to draw this house here on the x and y axis. So here is this house. And inside the house lives a person, and her name is 1.2. So let's use 1.2 to kind of describe what is going on with the ceiling and the floor function. Now, in a nutshell, the ceiling function rounds up where the floor function rounds down, and that's to the nearest integer. So let's look at this definition. The ceiling of 1.2 is what? And remember, the ceiling is defined as the smallest integer greater than or equal to x. So imagine she's looking up. And if we're going up on the y-axis, as we go up, numbers get larger. And here they're smaller. So 1.2, who lives in this house on the xy plane, when she looks up, she's going to see an integer that is larger. I'm going to write a few of them out. So these integers, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, going off to infinity, are all larger than 1.2. This is why 1 is not in this list, since 1 is not larger than 1.2. Now when ceiling, excuse me, when 1.2 looks up at her ceiling, what is the first integer she'll see from this list? If you said 2, you are correct. Her ceiling is 2 and 2 is the smallest integer on this list, and it's the smallest integer greater than or equal to 1.2. Okay, so now let's consider the floor of 1.2. So now, 1.2, she decides to look down at her floor. So I'm going to write out a list of integers that would be below 1.2, that is, integers smaller than 1.2. So as she looks down, there are all these integers below her feet. But her floor, that is the floor of her house, is what number? If you said 1, you are correct. The floor right under the feet of 1.2, that is the largest integer in this list here, and that's the largest integer that is smaller than 1.2, is 1. Okay, so now that we have this definition just down and some examples of the ceiling and of the floor, let's determine the intervals of continuity for the floor and ceiling functions. And I'm only going to cover the floor and I'll leave the ceiling as an independent exercise for the viewer. So let's start by considering our sample point of 1.2. So 1.2 was about here. That is x is 1.2 right about here on this on the x-axis and I want to find out what is the floor of 1.2 well we already know that's 1 so I'm going to put a point here and in fact what is the floor of say 1.5 or 1.8 well the floor of all of these is just 1 Since again, if we made a house with 1.5 in it and 1.5 looks down, it's going to see the number 1 under its feet. And now you may notice that I left these dots blank. That is, none of them are filled in. One of them will be filled in, but right now, before we've figured that out, I wanted to leave them blank. So the floor of 1.2 we said is 1. The floor of, say, 1.8 is also 1. So we're going to fill in this number on the left. Since no matter where we are from 1 to 2, excluding 2, so from 1 to 2, but again excluding 2, wherever we are on the x-axis, the floor function is going to be 1. 
So now based on this, we can sketch in more steps for our floor function. Okay, so your graph should look like this. And again, this is f of x equals the floor of x. So now I want to look at the limit as x approaches one from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches one from the right of f of x. I'm going to use these two limits, that is the left and right hand limit, to determine the limit as x approaches one of the floor of x. So looking at our graph, if we're approaching x equals one, which is here, when we're approaching one along the x-axis from the left, what is the value of f of x? That is, where is the purple line? It's at zero. So this limit here is zero. Now let's approach from the right. That is, let's approach one along the x-axis from the right. The purple line is here at two, excuse me, at one. So this limit is one. Since the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit do not coincide, this limit, that is the limit of the floor of x as x approaches one does not exist. What is f of one? That is, what is the floor of one? That equals one. Based on this, can we say the floor function is continuous or discontinuous at one? We say the floor function is discontinuous at x equals one since the limit of the floor function as x approaches one does not exist. All right, so how about we take a look at a different integer and see if this kind of helps us figure out the intervals of continuity for the floor function. So let's look at the limit as x approaches two from the left of the floor of x, the limit as x approaches two from the right of the floor of x. Let's use these two limits to see or to determine what the limit of the floor of x is as x approaches two. And then of course I wanna evaluate the floor function at two. So first the limit from the left, as we approach the number two along the x-axis from the left, the floor function up here in purple is equal to one. Now as we approach two from the right, the floor function is equal to two. So again, the floor function is also discontinuous at x equals two, since the limit as of the floor of x as x approaches two does not exist. And if you notice, rather than rewrite the sentence, the same conclusion applies here. Since the left and right hand limits do not coincide, the limit of the floor function as x approaches two does not exist. And now our floor function evaluated at two is just two. So the floor function, not only is it discontinuous at x equals one, it's also discontinuous at x equals two. And it's for the same reason. So take a moment, see if you can determine all the values of discontinuity, so all the places the floor function is discontinuous. Okay, so the floor function is discontinuous at every integer, and say let's call that integer n. So now looking at our work, what would the intervals of continuity be? So for this first example, we were approaching one from the left and from the right. We notice we are continuous from zero to one, and here we're continuous from one to two. So now looking at our picture, we can clearly see that our intervals of continuity go between integers. That is, from zero to one, we're continuous. From one to two, we're continuous. From two to three, we're continuous. So the floor function is continuous on open intervals between integers. So we would write from n to n plus one, where n is an integer. And you write integers in symbolically as z, and this just represents this set going from negative infinity all the way out to positive infinity. So negative, say, 10 would be here, positive one million would be out there somewhere. Negative infinity out here, positive infinity in this direction. Oh, and excuse me, I meant to say we're continuous from n to n plus one on these intervals. Now see if you can determine the intervals of continuity for the ceiling function as well. 
I hope this video was helpful.